time for you. So just make sure we Hello, everyone, and welcome to an Integrated Solutions for Retailers webinar with Town Shoes and Jesta IS. I'm Bob Johns, editor of Integrated Solutions for Retailers, and I'll be your host for today. Joining me are Town Shoes CFO, Peter Gerhardt. Hello, everyone. Gad Tisch, Product Marketing and Business Development with Jesta. Hi, everyone. And Earl Wiseman, Business Analyst at Jesta. Hello, everyone. Today we'll be discussing the importance of inventory management in an omnichannel retail environment. Specifically, we will be looking at how Town Shoes is creating an endless aisles environment for its customers, creating a seamless customer experience and boosting sales. Additionally, we will be taking a look at how the Justice solution that makes the whole process possible works. For our audience, we will be taking questions during this webinar, so if you have any questions, please feel free to type into the bottom left of your screen and the questions will pop up on our screen and we'll do our best to get them answered in an uh, orderly manner. Any questions that we're not able to answer on air will respond ver via email after the webinar. Gad, why don't you go ahead and take it from here. Thank you so much, Bob. Thanks for having us. Uh, we're really thrilled to be presenting uh, to you and sharing our story with Town Shoes. So we think the best way to start is really to get everybody acquainted with where we're going and what we're doing. So rather than you know, getting into a case study of some corporate company or something like that that we're all used to doing, uh, maybe it would be nice to bring it home and talk about things that we go through all the time. Um, I don't know about you, but I have a family with a couple of kids. And living in the Northeast, we have to make a lot of trips to the mall. And, uh, you know, it's an activity sometimes, and sometimes there's a real need. Um, and, you know, those trips can't, aren't always the easiest. You know, the kids can get rowdy, and that kind of thing can happen. But we're all at the mall enjoying ourselves, and everybody's seeing what they're after, and it's a great experience, and it's great to be with the kids. But what usually happens is this. Uh, your child's at the mall, or your uh, husband or loved one uh, gets restless, and they want to get out of there, and you still want to shop, and you're looking to get things, and what happens is your husband and you, or you and your wife, end up in some argument, blaming it on the kids that you want to leave because you just want to get home for football, or whatever it might be. So um, these shopping experiences, be it from you know just an individual going to a store and seeing what's happening uh, through a point of interaction, or just families going to a store and having these situations where they want to get out of there, and they say to themselves, you know what, you could just get it online. But what we notice is, you know, sometimes you get it online, and you're not necessarily able to find it online. Or if you do, it's not as fast as you'd want it, or it's not the right color, or there's something off uh, from what you were after. And this creates even more um, problems for the family at home because they're still arguing, and that whole trip was even more aggravating than you even bargained for. So really what we realized here, uh, aside from this family story and what goes on, um, you know, on any shopping experience, be it at a mall or a boutique or a ground floor or what have you, is um, distributed order management today is really limiting uh, visibility and customer choices. You know, we had set up a system with the ERPs that uh, numerous industries put into place in the 90s that enabled you to fulfill from uh, a centralized DC or certain fulfillment centers. But they weren't dynamic enough to respond to how the customer was evolving. And that's what was so important, that the customer is really looking for us to really solve whatever they're after in any way they uh, desire. As we've seen, the customer has taken on many shapes and sizes in terms of how they look into our products and what they look for, be it going to a dot-com site or falling in love with our product on Pinterest or Facebook or any of the social medias. So there is endless amounts of touch points for these customers to interact with us. So it's imperative that we find a way to be just as adaptive and respond in all these different channels with uh, fulfillment, you know, being able to really help them be fulfilled so that they aren't looking elsewhere and we lose sales. And always remembering to deliver a seamless experience. Because really at the end of the day, what we're looking to do is have your customers not only have endless aisles, 
but be giving you endless thank yous. You know, I mean, not to sound cheesy or anything, but that's really the essence here to not have uh, your customer turned off by the lack of availability, lack of delivery time, uh, lack of product, uh, any of those things. Uh, most of the time, the inventory is available. It just hasn't been uh, placed in the right um, fulfillment uh, slot so that it could be uh, properly executed and fulfilled. So uh, the best way to you know, really uh, share this, uh, I think, would be to look at the case with Town Shoes and how Town Shoes had been uh, working prior to adding a multi-channel fulfillment system and what has happened since. So I really, really appreciate Peter Gerhardt, the CFO of Town Shoes, joining us uh, for the call right now. And I turn the uh, mic over to him. Uh, thank you, Peter. Hello, everybody. Uh, I just want to start out by saying I'm the uh, CFO here at Town Shoes, so this won't be a highly technical discussion. Uh, really, we're just going to talk about uh, our problems and how we leverage DDOM to sort of uh, – to, to bridge the gap that we had. Town Shoes, uh, as a point of background, has been around since 1952. It's a Canadian company. We have 200 stores from coast to coast operating under various banners, principally the shoe company, which is a box operation, and uh, the shoecompany.com is a website associated with that uh, particular operation, and that's, that's what we're focusing on right now. Um, I would say that we have the same kind of challenges as every other retailer out there, uh, sort of getting the right sizes and the right styles into the right places, uh, trying to localize assortments, trying to get the stuff out to the stores. Uh, and when you layer e-commerce on top of that, it brings a whole different set of issues. Uh, in, in terms of our environment, uh, and, and I'm sure it's common to anybody in the fashion business. There's a lot of sizes. There's there's a lot of issues with uh, assorting. So rather than creating a specific e-commerce warehouse, our strategy was to leverage the entire inventory across the company. So we don't have any specific web inventory set aside. Uh, we also, being in the fashion business, we have limitations with reorder cycles. Uh, so we're working really with the inventory we have any, at any given point in time. So what we're looking at really is instead of one DC, we're looking at potentially up to 200 DCs with 5,000 people doing uh, fulfillment rather than a specialized group in, in any warehouse. So it brings a lot of challenges. Uh, what we found was that unless we automated this, this uh, particular set of processes, there was no way we were going to be able to move this forward. So really what we wanted to do was, uh, we, as I said, we wanted to leverage inventory to meet omni-channel fulfillment. Omni-channel is a very fancy word, and I've sat in on a lot of meetings where everybody tries to, uh, to address the idea of how do you bring all these channels together. Well, we actually only look at it as one channel. Our web store sits in our ERP system just like any other store, except that it doesn't have its own inventory. It's, it's going to be using everybody else's inventory. But in terms of the catalog, it's the same catalog, same description, same pricing, there's the same loyalty system. What we're really trying to do is make it a seamless experience. Uh, we needed a tool that would you know, let us go out and leverage all this inventory across the chain. And, and there's a lot of nuances to doing this. You get an order. It might have multiple items in it. Uh, this, any particular store might not be able to fulfill. So how do you go out and fix that problem? Uh, how do you reduce your shipping costs as much as possible? Canada, like the United States, are very big countries, so you don't want to be shipping from the East Coast to the West Coast if you can all, at all avoid it. And you also don't want to be hitting each one store all time after time after time. Uh, what you want to do is, is spread your orders across the chain so that no one particular store is being burdened by 
handling all these various orders. So what we did was we sat down with the developers at Jest and we sort of came up with a set of business rules that said, okay, look at where the inventory is. We divided the, the country into geographic segments and we said, let's look at the stores in a particular segment. Let's try to fulfill, let's try to optimize the best way that we can do a multiple unit order so that we're not sending the customer five or six or seven different shipments so that it is hopefully one, if that's possible, but as few as possible. We're also working with uh, order online, pick up in a store. Uh, we're, we're part way along the ways there, but, but really that's just a point of redirecting the shipping to make sure that it gets to the store we want it to go to. There are some other nuances. Our inventory is near real time. I don't know that anybody who's actually in real time. So we built some buffers into the logic so that if there's you know less than X number of pairs, the catalog won't show that the size on hand. That sort of takes care of, of that. What we also wanted to do is we wanted to make it as easy as possible in the field. Yeah, you know, we have 5,000 associates out there that are working with us in order to to handle this fulfillment. From a training perspective, it's got to be simple. What we did was we went ahead and we integrated the process with shipping so that as soon as the store confirmed, yes, we've got the item, yes, we've picked it, a, the courier was automatically dispatched to the store so that um, the store wouldn't have to worry about handling that. The whole thing was to make the process as simple as possible for the stores. The way we look at it, this is just another tool on our quiver. You know, it's it's uh, as as a CFO, I don't really care where the sale comes from, whether it comes from the web channel, whether it comes from the physical stores. What we want to do is make it simple to execute the sale, simple to make the customer happy, and simple to have the sales associate be able to uh, to make this thing go. We've been running this now for about six months. We had done testing before that, but the results were our sales have doubled over over the same period last year, while our operational costs have actually, although it has reduced, it's reduced on a on a per unit basis because we have not increased our store selling costs at the same time that we've doubled our our um, shipments. At the same time, we've reduced our, our labor costs in the office here because we are not, there's no manual processing anymore. This is, this is totally seamlessly electronically being generated. You know, we've got this quote unquote omni channel fulfillment. Really, we're just leveraging our entire inventory in order to fulfill our needs. Uh, the last bullet is endless aisles. What we want to do is extend this right into the stores. Uh, we're going to use this vehicle along with our website in order to do, you know, if you're in the store, we don't have your size. One of those challenges, we can we can leverage this, make the sale, go ahead and ship the item. So that's sort of the direction that we're heading in with this tool. As I say, we've had a lot of success with it. And we continue this to have been a uh, a real success story for us. So, uh, Gad, that uh, that's, that takes me to the end of what I want to talk about. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, Peter. We really appreciate it. I think this would be a great opportunity if anybody out there, uh, Bob, let me know if anybody has any questions for Peter. Uh, while we have him right now, it would be great uh, after his part. For any sure. Directions related to town shoes. Yep. Uh, one of the questions that they had uh, immediately was, "Is this something that's specific to shoe wear? Uh, does it translate to all apparel, and does it translate to all of retail?" I don't think it's at all specific to shoe wear. I think that anybody who's got distributed inventory can use this tool. It certainly uh, lends itself to any environment, from what I can see. Perfect. Uh, another question that came in was now asking if it's online sales that doubled or if total sales doubled, and are you considering uh, an overall sales increase? Uh, online sales doubled. We have uh, we, uh, overall sales, you know, 
have uh, we, we've been trending up this particular tool. We expect that once we have extended this endless aisle so that it will have a pretty significant impact. Right now, uh, anecdotally, we see 1% to 2% of our sales through special orders. We really think that we can double that by the time that we are finished rolling this out. Oh, okay. And then uh, another one there's asking about who gets credit for the sales when you have something that starts maybe online or uh, is picked up in the store. Um, who gets the credit for the sales or is a portion of the sale credit to the picking store? The, the store that ships gets credit. Because for us the web store is not actually a real store, there's not a real staff there, it's, it's all about the store. Now I know that, that that's going to be a, a, a real point of contention in different companies depending on how they're set up. But for us, the way we look at it, if the stores do not buy in, if the, uh, if the associates don't see an upside, uh, and if the inventory is limited, they're, not, they're just not going to cooperate. So you, you really have to make it worth the store's while, otherwise nothing is going to work. Right. Um, now, they did ask for inventory tracking. How do you ensure the accuracy of the inventory? Do you use RFID or some other type of system? We are just, uh, we're not using RFID. What we use is just uh, confirmed shipping and receiving. And that's why we really, uh, we want the stores to confirm that they actually have the item before the, the, the courier process gets kicked off. Uh, you know, everybody knows there's shrink in the stores. There is inventory that isn't where it's supposed to be. So there is a little bit of wiggle room in there, and that's why we added the extra step of having the store confirm, yes, we've got it, yes, we're ready to go. And, in fact, if they say, no, we don't have it, what happens is the system automatically kicks off again and goes through the process, goes to the next store in the list and says, okay, do you have it? Oh, okay. Now, another question that came through was, do the stores have access to pull up the inventory for online as well as other stores, or just their store and the online, or is everything visible everywhere? Everything is visible everywhere. And remember, the, the web store actually has no inventory. It's leveraging off of everybody else's inventory. So every store has visibility to everybody else's inventory. Okay. And then uh, how do you choose or how does the system determine what store to fulfill an order from? We have, we've actually sort of set up a table of, of stores within each region, uh, and uh, there's a hierarchy. And clearly we try to direct orders to our less busy stores if possible in order to sort of leverage the fixed costs there. But again, what happens is we don't want it to go back to a store over and over and over again. So it'll run through the table uh, in any particular sort of order scenario and then come back to the top once it's run to the bottom. Okay. Now, you mentioned earlier that uh, a lot of the costs in the store did not increase, uh, but they have a question here about your margins. Um, have your margins been affected by the cost to ship from a store since that could be significantly higher? And do you ship returns, clearance items, everything from the store? In terms of, in terms of uh, right now, the way we look at these things is, is they are incremental sales. So yes, so there is an additional cost of shipping from the store, but we look at that as a sale that wouldn't have happened. So the, the fixed costs that are already there, and most of these stores, they're box stores, they're not paying percentage rent, so we're not going to incur any more rent, we're not incurring any more labor. So, yes, we do have a, an incremental shipping cost, but when you subtract out the other costs, we're, we're working well ahead. Returns generally are coming through our main DC. Uh, we love for people to return shoes in the stores because we think that once they're physically in our store, it gives us an opportunity to save a sale or perhaps you know, make a, a, an incremental sale. Perfect. Now, how have the stores themselves received the process, uh, the, the staff, those types of uh, people? Have they been open to doing the shipping from the store as a, kind of an added uh, function? Because they're getting credit for the sale, yes. They are, particularly the lower volume stores, are very enthusiastic about the process. But it, it comes back to 
how are you motivating the stores and are you making it worth their while? Mm -hmm. Now we have another one that uh, kind of goes into a little bit of with the staffing um, and then also needing the supplies. Uh, it says you now need shipping supplies, cartons, tape, labels, etc. in each store. Also some amount of space to pa pick, pack, and ship. Uh, how much room do you need? How many orders come in? And uh, how are you staffing appropriately to cover those orders? You know, I don't have all the details of how many. Uh, suffice it to say that it's more than there were, and we expect it to be, again, we, we expect to grow incrementally in this part of the business. Uh, in terms of space, I mean, most of this is being done at the cash and wrap, outside of busy hours, and it's really, once we just got the regular routine of making sure that the packing material went out, at the same time as all of our other store supplies and, and really got integrated into that regular shipping system, we found that uh, we, we required very little extra overhead to make it work. Oh, okay. Now, what about for the accuracy of the inventory? Um, uh, is, if your system shows the inventory in the store, is it actually on hand? Uh, a lot of stores are notoriously inaccurate with their inventory levels. I wish I, could, I wish I could say that we weren't one of them, but we <laughs> have the same problems as everybody else, and so what we've done is just we stick a buffer in there, and we say, look, if there isn't X number of pairs of that style and that size, just assume the store doesn't have it and just move on to the next one. And that's really, it, it will become more problematic near season end and we'll have to tighten those things up. But at the same time, you know, we have general business improvement goals, one of which is just to make the records more accurate. I think that that doesn't make us different from any other retailer out there and it's just the point of doing your work better. Now, this one actually has to do with your buying process. Uh, are you finding that the buys going forward are changing by store because of how the customer is shopping and also fulfilling from the store? Um, would a certain type of shoe that wasn't previously offered at a store might be there because uh, people in that area have requested it via uh, ship from store? The answer to that is it's too early to tell. You know, we've sort of, we're only six months into this and our buying cycle is much further out than that. Clearly, from just just from a, uh, a skew count and depth perspective, the stores are going to get more inventory because the demand is going up and and we have to have it out there to service it. At some point, I could see if we're doing ten times the the web volume we're doing now, we might set up a DC to handle specific items that we think would be you know, uh, very popular across the board, but at this point, uh, it's too early to tell. Now, what about pickup in store? I know you fulfill from the store. Are you also offering pickup in the store? And if so, are you shipping then store to store for pickup, or do you strictly just fulfill from the store directly to the customer? Yes and yes, and we're still trying to perfect that uh, procedure. So, yes, we will do an interstore transfer to facilitate an in-store pickup. And uh, to us, it's just it's just another sale. It's just got an extra step to it. Um, and we would much prefer to address that problem by getting the right shoes into the right place at the right time. So it's sort of a two-edged sword. Perfect. Now, with fulfilling uh, from multiple stores, if you have somebody that orders, say, three different items and they happen to only be in stock in three different stores, are you consolidating those or just doing three different shipments? How does that work? Today we're doing three different shipments. Uh, our experience has been that at most we're shipping from two stores. Uh, and clearly if it becomes a problem, you know, it just won't be cost effective. We'll have to find a different procedure but we haven't run into that. It hasn't been a big problem for us to date. Perfect. Um, now, what about the improvement to days on hand inventory and the financial improvement that you've seen? Um, do you have your, is your inventory cycling quicker with this program? Uh, are you having the items in the store for a less amount of time? The, anecdotally, I can say yes. I can't give you any hard data on that because it's it's too early. But clearly, we're seeing a better turns in the short run, and we're seeing a, a, a greater cash flow out of the stores. Perfect. Now, um, now, what about the inventory for each store? 
if you're, is your inventory controlled by one central uh, command, or do you have individual inventory that uh, affects particular stores so that they can fulfill online orders? It, no, it, it is centric, centrally controlled. All right. Perfect. And I think uh, so far, I think that's the last question we have for Peter right now. Um, so I think maybe at this time, uh, Gad, you want to send it on to the next uh, speaker? I believe Earl is up next. Absolutely. I'm just going to walk us through a few more points here as we lead up to Earl talking about our product a little more. Thank Perfect. you uh, very much, Peter. Really appreciate it. We're really happy to hear uh, we've been able to help you at Town Shoes. Uh, so just getting further into um, our discussion on multi-channel fulfillment, as we discussed, uh, Just IS has a product that uh, delivers on your need to fulfill from anywhere. Um, our approach was truly that the objective for any retailer is the same. So whether you are a multi-channel store or a small one-off, at the end of the day, you're looking to complete the customer's transaction. You're really looking to give them an endless aisle. I mean, even a one-off store might have a web set up where you can get everything you need. So that was really important. Um, a place where everything could be aggregated, a central brokering of your goods so that you can manage them most effectively, creating prioritization throughout them, uh, enabling you know, multiple uh, entry channels for those orders to be fulfilled. And obviously, most importantly, with all that dynamic functionality added, that you have visibility and control so that things aren't getting out of hand and you're not just adding more functionality and losing more control. So really uh, delivering a flexible, adaptive, and agile supply chain to you, all integrated in our uh, vision merchandising retail solution. Um, you know, as Peter touched on, and as we look at multi-channel fulfillment, be it here or in other conversations we have, or as we look at it at taking shape in the marketplace, we see the great uh, benefits it yields via uh, reducing costs from an operational perspective, from a labor perspective, which Earl will touch on in a minute, uh, as Peter has already and from different kinds of processes that are definitely streamlined because of having this kind of system in place. In addition, because you're optimizing or taking best advantage of your inventory at hand, you're really able to manage your markdowns and not have to have these blow-up bonanza you know, type deals and liquidations when you're seeing that your stock actually has a lot more value and you're probably losing money on it. So we're looking to really increase those fill rates, improve your inventory turns, you know, obviously delivering on customer loyalty, you know, not wanting you to say to a customer it will take five days for you to deliver something when uh, they could be turned off by that because they could get it fulfilled somewhere else in one or two days. So really at the end of the day, selling from everywhere, filling from everywhere, and seeing it from everywhere in, as Peter said, near real time. Um, just to touch on the marketplace at large, a uh, few points here. I think we're well past these, you know, kinds of statistics and everything, so I don't want to uh, spend too much time on it. But we, we see the power of e-commerce. We saw with Cyber Monday how much bigger that uh, the, the revenue has become year over year, uh, how much larger our population has been engaged into uh, online shopping, and uh, making purchases and doing it on a frequent basis. There's a lot of different reasons uh, customers give for this kind of shopping, be it to save time because they're at work all day um, and they're not able to make it to stores on time, uh, looking for more variety to save uh, prices, or even, you know, given uh, the, the cost of gas these days, you know, we're seeing a lot of people looking at that as a reason for staying at home. Um, this is uh, uh, something that I'm sure we've all been privy to uh, over time, you know, as we get our different industry reports and read our trades every day. We see how much greater e-commerce has uh, become in our pie, and we're looking at it, uh, you know, worldwide e-commerce sales growing by more than 19% a year, and it being at $1.4 uh, by 2015. 
and then some breakdowns by uh, by region. Uh, you know, United States obviously a, a big player in this, but Europe and Asia are obviously key areas as well. And this is especially important to suggest and uh, make a point of because at the end of the day, uh, you're giving access to customers everywhere. So as much as Town Shoes is an operation that is focused on Canada, truth be told, their goods could be accessed from anywhere that these shoppers are after or getting the products they want. So really, um, we are looking at re, uh, reassessing what the prior uh, plan and strategy was. Uh, before fulfilling these orders were truly and uh, successfully done via the ERP systems that were put into place in the last quarter century of the 20th, 20th century, in the 80s and 90s, via just-in-time or any other kinds of great systems that we put in that were able to streamline your processes and push your operations and get goods wherever you needed them. But the, the truth is the customer obviously caught up and went way beyond that and is now mobily powered, desktop powered, uh, powered by a community, uh, by different social media insights that they really have so much information at their fingertips that it's imperative that we stay in step with them. So we need a system today that is a lot more demand driven. And it's imperative that your order fulfillment is able to do that, that you're sourcing and scheduling orders from anywhere. And as I mentioned here with Gartner, you know, for them uh, as, as a key uh, consultant and a key uh, advisor in our area, you know, for them a, a key customer-centric order management framework would be one that would, quote, capture, decompose, orchestrate, promise, execute, and settle. So not necessarily big key things, but things that aren't currently available in your 20th century ERP system. So we definitely deliver on those points that Gartner sees as a customer-centric order management framework and then go beyond. And uh, to hit on some of those points that we go on beyond, I will now turn the mic over to Earl Wiseman, our product specialist for Vision EDOM and Analyst. Um, Earl, please take it away. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gad. Thank you, Bob. And uh, I wanted to thank Peter, too. Uh, I think he, he really brought up all the advantages of uh, our e-commerce system that I'll be going into a bit more detail now. Uh, so it's uh, Vision EDOM, the Distributed Order Management Module. And we designed it for omnichannel retailers, such as Town Shoes. It's a web-based uh, module that allows you to fulfill web orders seamlessly by interfacing with the e-commerce system, the website, as well as with the merchandising system and its peripheral applications such as WMS and the POS system. Uh, retailers can leverage their inventory investment by making the same units available for sale in multiple locations concurrently, just as uh, Peter had mentioned. So, and it does this, as, again, as he pointed out, while promoting cost savings, reducing the inventory, the cost of inventory, reducing shipping costs due to unnecessary partial shipments, promoting operational efficiencies, and it enables retailers to optimize inventory to, and to improve customer satisfaction with a faster turnaround. So how does, how does it do this? On the next slide, uh, I'll talk about the fulfillment logic itself. Um, and it's really based on preferences that a retailer can set to their own discretion. Uh, it's priorities that you would set for the orders received from the website, and they'll be fulfilled from, they could be fulfilled from warehouse distribution centers or the full chain of stores. Um, the system uses different fulfillment strategies or themes to ship, uh, it could be either shipping complete orders, partial orders, it could be orders that are from a single source or splitting the order from multiple sources. And, and it needs to be flexible because not all retailers will have the same business process. Uh, you know, it's always a balance to satisfy the customer. You may want to, you may want to ship 
everything in a single shipment all the time, but for other retailers, it may be desirable to just go ahead and ship uh, from multiple locations if, that, if that's what's going to achieve uh, customer satisfaction. So again, uh, our module uses all these themes as they're selected and configured by the, uh, the retailer themselves. So the, the priorities you set determine the sequence in which the fill site's availability is considered when the system is locating the site to fill the orders. The priorities are set up across geographical sectors, as Peter mentioned, as you, that they define with either states or zip codes, provinces or postal codes. Uh, and the given fill site's assigned priority will vary from sector to sector. This gives the retailer control over the locations, over which ones will fill orders, and from where, what parts of the country, and in what order the locations should be considered. The retailers determine the, the logic that's applied to the web orders by selecting any of the following themes. And uh, we also have the concept of order types. There could be three different sales order types that come in, a standard order that has no flags on it, or the order might be flagged as a, as a ship complete versus a, a rush shipping. So and each of these three order types will be linked to any of four um, logic, logic streams that we call fulfillment themes. Uh, the first one being a ship complete. So this is, this is the case where you may always want to ship in a single shipment or send nothing at all. And it will select the fill site based on its priority in the sector and the availability of the ordered items. Then, then there's two themes that deal with how partial shipments will be dealt with. Uh, you could choose to allow a partial shipment, and you could choose to allow it for a given item. Or you may disallow. And in, in each case, it will select the fill site based on the priority in this sector and its ability to fill the most items. Uh, multiple shipments from multiple sites are allowed if that's a theme that you want to use in your business. And again, uh, well, before I get to the next point, I just wanted to say the fourth theme, which is uh, the one that Town Shoes employs, and we developed it for them, is the uh, what we call fill maximum quantities. So in this case, the, the logic will attempt to ship complete in a single shipment. But if it cannot, it will fill as many items, as many units ordered from a single fill site. So uh, I mean, you, you could sense that the combination of the order types concept with these fulfillment themes makes the system's fulfillment engine robust and flexible. Uh, what's more is that the fulfillment themes can be overridden uh, for given orders at the discretion of the customer service. Team. So special case handling is, is could be uh, you know, obviously an important uh, item that happens here. Uh, and another uh, important yet optional feature that Town Shoes employs is for the most centrally located sites or the, the, the less busy sites, as Peter had mentioned, to be rotated by assigning them equal priority. And by doing this, the system will evaluate the dates that they last ship before selecting it as a fill site, and it will not route the order to that site that fulfilled most recently. Uh, regarding inventories, the latest site inventories are used to, develop, to determine eligible fill sites. And the inventories are stored in the system at the chain, the global level, as well as by site level. Uh, just a word, because I know a question came in about in-store pickups. The system that I've just described uh, treats an in-store pickup request as any other order with the shipping address being simply another store. So it, it, it's seamless in that sense. Uh, one note on the performance of the system. Uh, after looking at six months of data at Town Shoes since they've been live, 
we see that the system can identify the optimal fill site for each item ordered in under three seconds on average while sifting through 400,000 items across the chain of locations. Just a couple of words about uh, its integration, the, our e-commerce module's integration with the merchandising system and the automation. So it sits positioned between the e-commerce site and merchandising. The module receives the web orders from the e-commerce system, manages the orders, routes them, as I've just described. It sends the catalog, inventory, and fulfillment results to the e-commerce system. There's comprehensive web catalog management, which is flexible. It could be manually maintained by adding or removing items from the catalog. Or it could be automated to have items on approved purchase orders to be added automatically to the web catalog. It's flexible in the sense that either the entire size range of an item can be sent up to the web catalog, or only the specifically active barcodes. Uh, you could send actual inventory levels or have them capped, uh, as Peter mentioned, how they could mitigate out-of-stock situations. And the range of dates to display such items on the web is also available. The system leverages item management, price management from the merchandising system. And in terms of uh, integration and automation, the shipping API, courier shipping API is integrated into the system. And all shipping documents are printed on location on regular paper. The web sale and inventory reduction is recorded into the merchandising sales audit and POS systems for seamless data flow and also enabling returns on web purchases to be handled either at a physical store or uh, by shipping the goods back to the center. Uh, the user interface is very, very simple to use and intuitive. Uh, there's views, single order views, multi-record views, uh, with hyperlinks on each screen so that navigation from sales order to invoice to shipment, uh, as well as uh, monitoring the status of the orders, seeing where they are, how far along into the cycle they are, is very easily uh, navigated within the system. And in terms of the uh, integration uh, with integrated shipping, the system, well, once the system has identified the optimal fill site based on the logic we've discussed, the next step is for the system to automatically notify the fill site of a pending order. And it does this with an email, automatically emailed pick list. The employee at the store or DC can print it out, use it for accuracy while locating the item ordered on the floor, and they simply enter the results of their picking uh, and process the shipment, which interfaces with the courier's web server using their shipping API. And this creates the shipping request automatically. So it's, it's a real simple uh, process for the stores. Uh, the packing slip and waybill appear on screen, and they're printed on regular paper uh, with the regular printer. At this point, the package is simply labeled, ready for pickup. Behind the scenes, the tracking ID is recorded into the system and forwarded to the e-commerce system, along with the results of the picking and the invoice to complete the shipment. And this signals the e-commerce system to finalize the payment and notify the customer of the order completion. Uh, one now, Peter brought up the situation where the item may, even though the system identified the fill site as having the item order, there could be all different scenarios that might cause that item not to be shippable. It may be damaged, or the quantities in the system may not be updated. So in this case, it can easily cancel the shipment just by entering a zero quantity ship. And this results within moments in the next eligible fill site to receive the notification of the pending order 
So there's no delay in fulfillment to the customer. Uh, in terms of uh, returns, the customer can return the web purchase at a physical store by presenting their invoice. Or an online refund can be done if the customer ships it back, where the e-commerce staff can issue the refund directly in our system, which is then fed to the e-commerce system for online refund to the credit card. And I will now turn it back to Gav just to uh, wrap up. Thank you very much. Hi, thank you so much, Earl. We really appreciate that. It was great to um, learn more about the system, and we will open it up to questions in just a second. I just wanted to wrap everything up for us and uh, get to know, again, what we've been seeing with Peter and other case studies we've noticed and seen in the marketplace at large. So really looking at, you know, bridging the gap between your offline inventory and your online inventory, really getting everything working effectively, executing on all levels, not having this surplus stock. You know, you're really battling with making your stores look like the trendiest places so you don't want to have too many SKUs out there. But at the same time, you know, customer complaints are always that shelves are empty, they can't get what they want and uh, they're never happy, you know. So it's a real battle that we're waging here. So this kind of online fulfillment, this uh, distributed order management can really help to alleviate some of that uh, trouble. You know, maximizing your product assortment and inventory availability, uh, localizing assortments to maximize your sales, and uh, real-time access for inventory at every touch point the customer wants to hit. Um, as we've mentioned a few times, and Peter loves whenever I say omni-channel, so it was nice to hear how much he enjoyed it today, so that was a good laugh for me. But really always about the customer experience, you know, looking to not only get them to come once, but make this a lifelong experience, you know. We have seen it uh, many times already, you know, the store is not a place of transaction anymore. It's not a one-stop shop just for that. It's a place of interaction. It's a place of really getting to know your customer and being able to deliver it to them everywhere and anywhere. It's an end-to-end -end experience that begins whenever they want and wherever they want. Um, and uh, the point is that you make flawless fulfillment, no matter what they're after. And uh, really just uh, wrapping up, you know, hitting on this idea that we are in a new world order, you know, a supply chain that stretches seamlessly from the manufacturer to the customer, uh, you know, this new emphasis of fulfilling from everywhere. We're looking at fulfilling individual orders, the eaches of the world, instead of massive quantities, um, store level inventory management and uh, near real-time visibility, and control of cross-channel inventory from the supplier to the shelf, you know, absolute control everywhere. So just to wrap it up here, um, you know, we really see uh, this kind of system and what's going on today as something that's a, a siren call for all of us, you know, to galvanize us to be ready to deliver to these customers wherever they want us, to not lose these shoppers because you can only deliver it two days longer than the other guy. Um, you know, providing this kind of endless aisles so that you're able to get satisfaction and loyalty that is boundless. Um, and really, really, at the end of the day, being able to have a supply chain that is dynamic, that's reacting, that's moving towards what your customers need you to be doing. And with Jessa, we have the integrated solution that really harmonizes all of this and gives you one version of the truth. So I uh, just want to, you know, make sure we have enough time for questions for Earl, so I'd really love to open the floor up and have Bob take over and let us know of any questions we could put forth to our analysts or looking at multi-channel fulfillment at large or distributed order management. Thank you so much. Bob, I turn it to you. Thanks, Gad. No problem. I um, just want to tell everybody in the audience just a reminder that uh, you can still keep submitting questions. And at the end of the webinar, we will respond to them via email uh, over the next uh, day or so. Um, so just we can get them to Peter, we can get them to Earl, we can get them to Gad. So whoever you need to answer the question, we'll make sure uh, it takes the time to get the answer to you. Um, we do have several questions uh, in the hopper here right now for Earl. Um, one of the first ones, Peter touched on it a little bit, but uh, 
talking about the directed logic that Town Shoes is using. Um, is it footwear specific or apparel specific, or is the logic uh, workable to all retailers? Is it like a one size fits all, or is it something that can be done in the business rules configuration and set up when it's implemented? Uh, yeah, thank you for the question. I, I don't see I don't see this being limited to apparel whatsoever. It could be used uh, for any retail any retailer period. Uh, you know, it's a it's a system that that fulfills web orders on merchandise order. Any any items that are ordered it doesn't matter what they are. Perfect. Now, another one has to do with returns management and the importance of it um, and kind of how you tackle that with the solution. And is it kind of crucial to have this feature as part of the back-end e-commerce fulfillment engine uh, when you're looking at a solution like this? Well, it's important uh, that it's able to handle, that it's able to be flexible. Uh, I mean, customers may walk in, walk in their web purchase to uh, their nearest location and do the return there. Uh, in that situation, it's, it's seamless because the order can be looked up uh, with the invoice that the customer brought in. They could look it up and issue the refund uh, for regular store policy. Or if they did choose to ship it back uh, to the head office, then at that point, uh, our module has a return menu to easily process that return and issue the, the credit online issue the, uh, the refund online. Perfect. Um, another question here is, why is uh, integrated shipping so important? And do you notice a lot of the time being wasted in this step that uh, dictates the necessity for a courier API and full functionality for shipping? And what happens if the system kind of doesn't tell you the truth about the whole thing and says goods are at a store, but when you go to pull them, they're not there? Right. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, I mean, Peter touched on this, how he want, how it was important for Town Shoes to have a very, very streamlined and simple uh, process for shipping the web orders. Uh, you know, it, it couldn't get overcomplicated uh, in the numbers of steps that their store employees would have to carry out. So really all there is to it for them is to find the the items on the shelf and walk over to their terminal and say, yes, I'm, I have it and I'm shipping it. Uh, there's no phone calls or phone calls to the courier or calling up the courier's website to issue a shipping request. That all gets handled behind the scenes at the click of one button. Uh, they get their, their labels, their shipping labels, and the courier shows up to pick up the package. In terms of the what happens when the item is not there, uh, again, that was an important uh, that was an important scenario that Town Shoes brought up to us during the development of the product. Uh, that invariably, it, it, there's going to be situations where even though the system identified the site as having the product, it, it's it's just not there. Uh, in that case, the flow needs to be able to continue through the cycle and. Uh, Again, the process is not any different for the store employee. They don't have to do anything different. They just use the same terminal, the same screen, to say, well, no, I don't have it. And in that case, the shipping request is bypassed, and the order moves on to the next available uh, fill site. Perfect. Now, another question that uh, gets asked a lot, and uh, everybody seems to have a little bit different definition of it, but could you kind of give us your definition of a channel and of omni-channel? A, a definition of, of, of a channel. A channel is the how, how is the merchandise delivered to the customer? Or do, they, do they walk into the store and buy an item? That's, well, that's one channel. The, the store channel, the, uh, the traditional brick and mortar store, or will they order it online? Uh, well, that's, that's the other channel. Uh, now what about the definition of omni-channel? Uh, omni-channel, uh, multi-channel are interchangeable terms uh, to, to the best, of, you know, it includes everything. Being able to, being able to browse online, go buy it at the store, or browse online and, and, and make the purchase online or vice versa, go into the store. Go into the store. Uh, they may 
be interested in buying something, they don't end up buying it there, or the store may not have it, then they can make the online order from the store, uh, or walk into the store and have it shipped somewhere else or to another store. Perfect. Now we have just a couple minutes left, uh, but I definitely want to touch on uh, this question that's been asked a couple different ways uh, so far. But it's, um, if they're using different systems for wholesale and retail, uh, would the EDOM solution look across both systems for inventory availability source and sourcing of orders? Um, can they both be run on the same system? As it's implemented today at Town Shoes, it's using the retail system to source orders, but it's definitely in it's definitely designed to be able to interface with a sourcing system. Okay. Uh, well, I think we have time for maybe one last one. Um, how often is the e-commerce system inventory cash refreshed? And how does the, uh, even though, or I'm sorry, even though the EDOM system is getting every sale receipt, do you push all transactions to e-commerce as well in re -time, real time? Uh, if I understood the question, uh, just working backwards, you wanted to know if the e-commerce system will get all sale transactions even from their uh, traditional stores? Is that? Uh, it sounds like it. And that, how often the e-commerce system inventory cache is refreshed so that they can get the uh, inventory uh, in near real time even when they're online looking, even though you just shipped something from store. Right. EDOM has the latest site availabilities of the entire chain, and those it's really up to the retailer how often they want to do the refresh. It could be done as often. It could be done multiple times a day, multiple times an hour. It could be once a day. Uh, all, all the inventories, the latest inventories, are sent up at a chain level as well as site levels to make uh, site lookups possible, item lookups possible at a, at a given site. Uh, and again, it's the entire merchandising uh, inventory that is shared with EDOM and forwarded to the e-commerce system according to how often they refresh their jobs. Perfect. Well, uh, that kind of looks like we have all the time we have for today. We do have probably about 15 more questions in the queue there. So I want to assure everybody that we will get to your questions and send you an email with an answer, uh, like I said, over the next couple days from the appropriate person. Um, I want to thank all of my guests for the participation and, of course, the audience for engaging with these questions. And I hope everyone was able to get some good, actionable information. Uh, Peter and Earl and Gad gave some excellent information and really should help you as you move towards the omni-channel experience. Um, remember, if we didn't get to the questions, we will respond. And just want to let you know we thank you for being here. And this has been an Integrated Solutions for Retailers webinar with Townshoes and Jesta. Thanks, and have a great day.